So just a quick announcement. Nothing I'm about to say here is conspiratorial. And with that out of the way, maybe one of you can grab the door so we can finish roll call. We're going to cover a back alley topic today. And you know by now that I don't really feed conspiracies. I don't push fear topics just to grab clicks. But even so, this one might feel like doom territory, at least for a minute. Just stick with me. We're going to talk about banks tracking your purchases in a way that would allow organizations to see what you're up to. Organizations like, I don't know, the government, but not limited there. This is a slippery slope. And if it seems like it belongs in the doom and gloom category, well, I'm going to tell you why I actually think that this isn't really a question of whether it will happen. It's just a question of when. So let's start off with what's happening today. Banks use something called merchant category codes. That's an MCC. And that identifies the type of merchant that you're buying from. Examples would be clothing stores, airlines, lodging, government services, etc. And maybe you've seen that your online banking portal already has a budget tab that will show you how much you spend on certain categories. This is how they know. Now, if you take your dog to the vet, the MCC is 0742. If you pay a roofer, it's 1761. If you buy a wig or a toupee, 5698. And if you hit up a massage parlor, 7297. To be really clear, this is not a case of if or when even. This is already happening. And it's not a case of me trying to be ominous here. When I log into my online banking accounts, they offer to help me better understand how I use my money. Again, this is how they do it. They can tell me how much I spend on clothes, on groceries, utilities, flowers, paint. They can tell me that month by month. If I'm feeling fancy and I want to buy a fur coat, They'll know that's code 5681. If I want to hit a coin shop, well, if I bought anything at a coin shop, anything on the table here using anything other than cash, well, that's MCC 5972. Now, how the banks use this information and who from outside the bank can gain access either to the information in aggregate or to your particular spending habits, I don't know. I can't say. And this is where I remind you again that I'm not here to tell you scary stories. I'm just here to talk about practical planning. And you may have seen the concept of merchant category codes hitting the news lately because the International Organization for Standardization, apparently that's a real thing, approved the creation of a new merchant code for gun retailers. And there has been some pushback. Now, if you followed that news, you might have seen that these codes don't identify your actual purchase, just the type of merchant. Now, if I used a Citibank card, they wouldn't know if I bought a fur coat or fur pants, for instance, just that I spent $800 at a fur shop. I don't know, maybe it was a hat. Same thing here. Maybe it was ammo or glass or sticking with a fur theme. Maybe it was a ghillie suit, but it's not specific the purchase is just categorized. And we don't have to look too far down the road to see how this becomes relevant to gold and silver. Nobody likes the idea of being profiled. I think that's an easy place to start. Now, if I spent a high percentage of my income at fur shops and massage parlors, I'm not sure I'd want that identified. If I spent a bunch of time at coin shops and sporting goods stores, I think that's my own business as well. Today, though, it's really just psychographic information that my banks have access to. They know my buying behavior. If and only if I don't use cash, but we'll come back to that. The first actual jump here that I'm going to make beyond what's happening today is to the inevitable rollout of central bank digital currencies, the CBDCs. I don't think that there's any question that these are coming. I only think it's a matter of rollout plans. It's a matter of when. And maybe they roll out to administer government services and entitlements only, say like Medicare, food stamps, and I think that's called SNAP now, IRS payments or refunds, unemployment. You get the idea. Really, I think that that's probably as far as they'll go for mandatory use. But on a long enough timeline, who knows? So the second jump that I'm going to make is the possibility of pass-through reporting and even potential limitation by category. Uh, a CBDC is different than a regional bank debit card in that the CBDC would be a product of the federal government. 
And if the government decides that fur is bad, well, they have a path to creating and passing legislation to limit how much fur you can buy. So if all of your purchases fed up through a CBDC one way or another, there would be a functional way for them to administer that. They could limit how much you buy. And we already know there's code for it. It's 5681. And if this feels like science fiction, well, it shouldn't because most of this is already in place. And this is really just the future version of the restrictor played on Will Ferrell's Red Dragon. Hopefully two or three of you got that reference. Now, before I go any further, I should probably explain how this relates to gold and silver, why I have this stuff on the desk. Now, I feel pretty strongly that cash will be in play in one form or another for a long time. And on one hand, I think that it will become increasingly convenient to use payment options other than cash. But as digital reporting and controls become more commonplace, that could change. And the question then is if and when those things change, where does cash and other physical assets fit in? Well, I would say they're the go-to for people who don't like where things went. Now, the easy answer to me is to give myself a little bit of flexibility by having some options. And to anyone thinking that Bitcoin is going to take over the role of gold, well, I would say that this roadmap shows one more reason to have non-digital currency in one form or another, assets, cash, whatever it is. Bitcoin is not that. Gold and silver, to me, I think it is, and it's a long play for me. So I don't think that I'm going to need it so that I can be off the grid with my fur hat purchases in the next couple of years. But if I look out over the next 10 or 20 years, the likelihood of using precious metals to take care of certain things, I think it becomes a lot more likely. Now, gold has never been a way to skirt sales tax to me. It's never been a way to buy anything shady. It's really just a good way to store up some wealth. But if a CBDC did roll out a little bit too aggressively, or new reporting tactics got too invasive, I do like the idea of just having some other options. Now, right now, we do have a good option. It's called cash. That takes care of things in most cases, but not everyone will even take cash today, and that's a trend that's probably going to continue. So this is really just a case of planning ahead with something that I think becomes more valuable over time, not just in price, but in potential use cases. Now, I had a friend say that buying cars is a good investment, and I understand the angle, but we were talking about land, and I don't think that that's good planning. Now, his take was that he could roll these cars into land at some point. I just didn't really follow the thinking there. I think it would be hard to buy land with Ford GT, but gold, that seems like a pretty easy way to go about that kind of thing. Now, none of this is to say, get your money off the grid. It's just to say that I think it's good to have options. So one final point, everything that I've been talking about here is an evolution that would take many years. I think I'm going to go into this a little bit further down the road, but CBDCs will be rolled out one way or another. That is a given, but adoption will be very slow. I'm not even going to get into the argument on why people give that it won't be. I think that's simply giving up and not thinking anything through really this is just another case of long-term planning for me. And as for those two ideas that I gave that aren't simply inevitable, the idea of full disclosure on purchases outside availability of that information, or even the potential limiting of purchases by category. And I'll just admit that last one, that wasn't my idea. There are people saying that's coming. Well, I'm a strong believer in the emergence of workarounds. If a new process is bad enough, people will find a way around it. I think Jeff Goldblum said it best in Jurassic Park, Life finds a way. And that idea that people find a way around things, I think that's the most important part of this video and it's why I think it makes so much sense to plan in a way that gives us more options. And I think that makes our point. We will go into those CBDCs a little bit more down the road, but for now, let us know what you think. I skipped the Bitcoin angle in this one on purpose. We can come back to that. I also just barely grazed the hot button category code edition there. Maybe you noticed it. We'll come back to that as well. I'm mostly curious, though, about your thoughts on continued relevance of precious metals. And I don't think I'm going to be using them to pick up groceries anytime soon or really at any point. I'd like to hear your thoughts there. But I like the idea of having some physical assets for some pretty obvious reasons, really. So let us know where you stand. And while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button. It's right there. It's easy. Be sure to subscribe with notifications turned on if you want to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.